I've been stuck in this spiral for a while now. I scroll until it catches my eye, get my hopes up, click, and find myself disappointed, only to do it again, expecting the outcome to change. Scroll, click, let down. There are periods when it gets better for a while. My attention shifts to something else, but it comes back. It always comes back, and it's been getting worse again lately. I've started noticing the words and sometimes appear in unexpected places. I catch them in conversation. They jump at me from the page of the book I'm reading, and I might hear them whispered when I put my ear against the walls of my apartment. And maybe it's finally a message of some kind, kind of like angel numbers or something, signaling an important event about to occur, but it might just as well be an illusion of frequency, a cognitive bias in which I more often notice these words because of their presence in my mind, because I am subconsciously looking for them. And I am looking for Or maybe it's something bigger, the universe playing cruel tricks on me, taking advantage of my weakness for its own entertainment. I wouldn't be surprised as I've already fallen for the traps our strange modern overlord, the black box, has laid down for me. I see them when I accidentally swipe right on the home screen of my phone and end up on the weird, recommended news page. It's right there, another article talking about release dates, estimates and other delusions, probably written by another just like me. I already know that there's nothing in it that could lift me out of this predicament, only paragraphs I've skimmed through countless times before, but I click on it regardless, only for it to drag me deeper, as I once again willingly point out my Achilles heel to the algorithm. Something that it will not forget to exploit the next time I enter this arena of attention. I was left standing in the rain that June. I still think about how naive I was back then. But while it did hurt, it didn't deter me. It only made me stronger, more resilient, more numb for the following year of silence I was destined to endure. If you're worried about me after listening to this, you shouldn't be. After all, this is the daily existence for every passionate Hollow Knight fan waiting for Silk Song to come out. Okay, okay, bit over for a sec. Hollow Knight is one of those games that left a huge impression on me, and I've replayed it too much at this point. I mean, everything has been said about this game by now, but still, I cannot understate how thoroughly it clicked with me back when I played it for the first time. First, the game just looks incredible, partly because Team Cherry kind of went naughty mode with the parallax effects, and also because of its unique art style and setting. The aesthetics draw you in, and before you know it, you've already gone through so many branching pathways that there's no way you can find your way back. You keep pushing forwards until the game finally allows you to reorient yourself with a map, and then you get lost again. All while following the trail of puzzle pieces of lore, characters and background elements that help you connect together the story of this foggy, dying bug kingdom. And then, to top it all off, the game gives you the most fluid combat and movement system I've ever experienced to play around with. The game is hard, but the level of control and difficulty intersect into the sweet spot where the game feels like... what I imagine how Goku feels like when he goes Ultra Instinct. And you get it by now. I kind of like this game. And in the beginning of this chapter, I used the word impression, like a lasting mark impressed on the surface, to describe the effect it had on me. And I mean that in a very straightforward way, as this wasn't something that could easily be brushed off and forgotten afterwards. Hollow Knight changed me, and this channel probably wouldn't even exist hadn't I played it back then. But it's not just me that it left an impression on. Other people really love this game as well, 
And not only that, it's not just people it left an impression on, but the indie gaming scene as a whole. It set a new bar for how good independently produced games could be, sold a ridiculous amount of copies, and became the Metroidvania game outside of Metroid and Vania. So considering everything I've mentioned so far, you can imagine the excitement in the air when Team Cherry, all the way back in 2019, on Valentine's Day, made an announcement. Instead of just adding a new playable character, Hornet to Hollow Knight, like they originally had promised in their Kickstarter goals, an entirely new game, Silk Song, a sequel centering around her own adventure, was in the works. And thus, a question was raised within the minds of Hollow Knight fans all around the world. If Team Cherry, in their first attempt in just under three years of development, were able to create a masterpiece of the magnitude of Hollow Knight, just imagine what they would be capable of with more resources and some real experience under their belts. And a lot of people did imagine. And fueled by the images conjured in their minds, they built communities and set reminders for Nintendo Directs in their calendars, all in anticipation for this game that would totally be coming out sooner than later. And then people waited. And waited some more. And now, five and a half years later, when you consider what Team Cherry has delivered since the announcement, one trailer, one missed release date, couple of posts affirming that the game is still being worked on, and a whole lot of silence. You may start to empathize, or at least understand the state of mind I portrayed in the intro. But do you really understand how deep this goes? As that's nothing compared to the sheer absurdity you find when you dig deep within the hopium fume field dumpster fires which are the Hollow Knight related communities on the internet. So to put it plainly, you can look at these places as kind of like a downward spiral staircase into hell with each of the floors along the way more deranged than the one above. I've had my brain fried by heavy exposure to this stuff for the past two months and now it's time for my therapy session. So. We're gonna go through all of this together. And just to make it fun, I'm going to explain everything along the way in Hollow Knight terms. So, let's start from the top. Even though Reddit is basically hell just by itself, the jump off point for this descent, r slash Hollow Knight, is not that bad to be honest. The infection, metaphor for the brain rot caused by this unrequited desire for Silk Song, hasn't properly taken root here. So, this place is not that different from Dirtmouth, the place where your descent starts in Hollow Knight as well. There used to be some silly daily Silk Song waiting posts, but all of them have given up and disappeared at this point. Their reactions to announcements on news are grounded and carefully excited, but five and a half years is a long time, so of course there's some worry and frustration towards the lack of communication and who could honestly fault them for that? The posts here are fine, but almost predictable to the point that they become boring. And this place is pretty boring and safe. We're still on the first floor after all. But the next stop down, r slash Hollow Knight memes, immediately feels different. Less like Dirtmouth and more like the Fungal Wastes as there's a split down the middle of this community of people who have lost their minds to the infection and others who have been able to resist it. But at its surface, it's not too unhinged either. The memes that you find here are for the most part still very reddit coded, as in conventional. The people who end up here are ultimately looking for a fun time and the most widely appealing stuff gets pushed to the top. But if you stay here for an extended period of time, you might get lucky enough to witness a disintegration of this facade in real time. Two years ago, this meme was posted to the subreddit. The joke is that the reason Team Cherry hasn't released any new information 
is because the GOAT Hollow Knight lore YouTuber Mossbag is too good at deciphering this stuff. So they don't want to give him anything new to work with. It's a pretty normal meme for a place like this. A fun theory reaching for any reason for the silence, but when one desperate Silksong anticipator looked at it, they saw a solution. If Mossbag is the one preventing the game from coming out, then we should just get rid of him. A lot of people thought that was a reasonable conclusion, and the foundations constructed from silly normal memes collapsed under the pressure of pagefuls of posts calling for Mossbag's death, and of course some from dissenters attempting to defend him. And then after a few months of chaos, people got it out of their system and the place went back to normal. It's a kind of back and forth here. The infection is always in the background waiting for a moment of weakness, and when it strikes, you get people pretending that Silksong has already come out, but other times they're hard at work keeping the infection at bay with the power of Spongebob memes or something. But what happens when the infection takes over completely? Well, there is one other community, the primal aspid in the room, which I fear has altered my psyche permanently over the course of making this video. When you make your way down from Arshlas Hollow Knight memes to Arshlas Silk Song, the air starts feeling different as the whimsical silliness of the former is replaced by confusion and bitter irony. This used to be a normal place for normal discussion, but it was doomed from the beginning as there was something insidious growing beneath the surface. Unrestrained hype with nothing, no new information or release it could be contained by. And now its influence has distorted everything. The posts you find here today are caked in layers of irony, sealed together with a mixture of anger, depression and desire. They form a protective armor which is powerful and incomprehensible to anyone passing by, but it does have one devastating weakness. When anything resembling legitimate information pops up, it's stripped away to reveal a glimpse of what is at the core of this subreddit. A genuine excitement for a game that should have come out years ago already. But the information never amounts to anything, so expressing this emotion sincerely always ends in hurt and thus the protective layers are once more applied even thicker than before, more ironic, detached, and abstract. Before we take a step deeper, here's a quick question to check your level of brain rot. Which one of these choices is correct? Hyphen Y, hyphen vertical bar, or maybe something like hyphen X? If you answered this question, and you know what I'm talking about, you're already too far gone. But if this question says nothing to you, there might still be hope. But remember, I told you we're going to go through with this together, so I'm going to ruin it for you anyways by explaining it, as not only was this the only thing that Arshla's Silk Song was focused on a couple of months ago, it's a good example of how its users create these layers that they hide behind. And this one started off with the classic joke of creating bait posts, trying to get other people to believe that the game had just come out, only for them to feel like an idiot after getting baited, clicking the post open to find a clown costume or something inside. A game as anticipated as Silk Song is perfect for this kind of activity, but people overused it to the extent that some conspiratorial minded users started doubting even official sources, claiming that the game had never even existed in the first place. And then, in reaction to this skeptical culture that had grown on the subreddit as a result of this running joke, this image depicting the main character Hornet with a cigarette in hand was created. It's a variant of the slightly older bait used to be believable meme, which, thanks to the amount of baiting happening on here, understandably took over the subreddit. Then some users created their own simplified versions of it, and then simplified it some more, ultimately ending up at the very bare-bones representation of the meme, 
where the hyphen represents the cigarette and the adjacent letter, Hornet. This meme had everything. The expectations, the malice and the unhingedness of this place condensed into the tiniest possible signifier and I think it's this potency which enabled it to keep evolving even past this point. You see, it didn't end there. The different letters gained their own followers who created imaginary churches and cults starting a conflict which spread across the community, pitting its members against one another in a holy war that could only have one victor. If you think that this is a crazy leap from bait posts to here, you underestimate the infection. As it didn't stop there either. These people wrote chapters and chapters of detailed background information, religious texts and f***ing poetry to create lore for these imaginary factions which, just to remind you, were themselves inspired by a barebones version of a simplified version of a simplified version of a variant of a meme which was a reaction to a culture molded by a running joke taken too far which was a reaction to the relationship between the hype and the long development time for this game. And then the trend died down a bit, and now when you go to r slash silk song, you'll find something else entirely. Shortly after the letter thing, there was another war between Skilk and Skong. Please don't ask me what that means. Then when I started writing the script, the page was filled with these which fanbase has it worse posts, and now that I'm rewriting this, all you see on the front page are posts about eating the cherry of Team Cherry. And this is what I'd consider the more charming side of Arsla Silk Song. Hope and depression expressed through goofy irony gymnastics. But the emotion of genuine anger shows itself differently. When you sort by controversial, you'll find the users who've had enough. That genuine excitement they used to share has soured and those protective layers have been discarded as they no longer serve a purpose. Team Cherry doesn't care about its community. TC fans are absolutely delusional if they think TC is still working on the game. I have lost the respect I had for Team Cherry. They don't deserve us. The juxtaposition of these two types of expression, ironic and hostile, or what I think give Arsla Silk Song its signature uncomfortable atmosphere. And if I had to compare it to a location in Hollow Knight, the infected crossroads would be the obvious pick here. A regular old place turned nightmarish by the infection. In the story of Hollow Knight, the Pale King wanted to defend all of these places by creating a vessel, a being that could contain the spreading infection within itself. And this aspect of the story opens up an interesting question considering this analogy for the brain rot that I've been using. Would it be possible for something like this to exist in real life? There is an answer that you might find if you venture even deeper. You would need someone with just the right set of skills, dedicated and desperate enough to take the risk and go through with it and create a real vessel that the hype could be channeled into. Their own silk song. But come on now, there's no way anyone would actually... A little over a year ago, creator Watermelon started documenting his process of developing his own silk song on YouTube, taking inspiration from the trailer and filling in the blanks it had left behind. He created a couple of different versions and then finally released his own watermelon themed Silk Song fan game, Melon Melody, on itch.io. And it's unironically kind of good. The map is massive, way bigger than what you would expect from a fan game, it's balanced to an enjoyable level of difficulty, and most importantly, despite being an imitation of sorts, it has real personality, which gives it this aura of authenticity. Like, look at the shape of the map. The fake out final boss, and these goofy flying watermelon enemies who normally chase you, but if their helmet covers their eyes, they just zoom around crashing into the walls. I don't think you come up with stuff like this unless you put some genuine care into it. And 
at least to me, the end result does feel Silk Song-ish. Why am I even surprised? It's the Hollow Knight fandom. These guys write lore for the f***ing alphabet. Of course there would be one guy who would take it to this extent, but the funny thing is, there is more than one guy. There are like fucking 8 of these games that you can find on itch.io, including not one, but two demakes for a game that hasn't even completely been made yet in the first place. Of course these games are not all as faithful to the source material as Mill and Melody, but the fact that they exist shows how far beyond ironic memes the community's obsession has gone at this point. But while it's fun to pretend for a video that a fan imitation could solve this problem of unrequited hype, in reality, it's not even close. No matter how deep you go, no matter how ambitious, these projects barely get any attention in the places you would expect them to thrive in. And at the end, just like in Hello Nest, there are only two real ways out of this conflict with the infection. Either its source is defeated, or you run away and leave it all behind. Either the real game comes out, or you stop caring about it. Sometimes great art just never gets finished. Who knows if we'll ever get to see what kind of adventures would have awaited us in the dark continent in Hunter x Hunter, or if we'll ever witness Musashi finally fight Kojiro in Vagabond. And sadly, we'll never get the full picture of how Kentaro Miura would have brought Berserk to its conclusion. And I'm okay with all of that. I've had a great time with Togashi's and Inoue's works, even in their incomplete state. If one day they decide to conclude them, I'll be very happy, but if it's something they're not interested in anymore for any reason, I'm not going to complain about it. Because at this point, I guess I care more about having them do whatever they want to do than I care about closure for my favorite series. On the other side of that, the decision to continue Berserk after Miro's passing was interesting, but Obviously, the matter of whether it had ended on or continued after his final chapter would have had no effect on it being one of my favorite stories ever written. It's not every day that you come across these pieces of art that slip past your defenses and hit you in your core, so when you do, I don't know, I'd rather embrace that rare moment and the art responsible for it as what it is instead of slamming my cutlery on the table, asking for more. Somehow distorting that past enjoyment into entitled demands for the next quick life-changing experience. Despite the silly intro to this video, that's what my honest feelings towards Hollow Knight and Silk Song are like as well. It's incredible that this small project, which started from a game jam, had such a massive impact. And of course I am still excited for Silk Song, and I would love to scrap this script altogether and play it right now if I could. But if for some reason it was delayed even further or cancelled altogether, I would be disappointed for sure, but it would be okay. I mean, Team Cherry came out of nowhere, created a masterpiece and made it very accessible. How could it not be okay? They should be able to do this in whichever way they want to. Nevertheless, it must be interesting to be in their shoes and watch all of this unfold. Every little comment they make and action they take reverberates around the internet, creating waves of speculation and memes that die out as quickly as they come to existence. Thousands of people closely observe their every step and when some of them get tired of waiting, that impression starts to ache, and they complain about the lack of communication, claiming that it would be easy for Team Cherry to let us know what is happening. And this one is actually a heated topic of discussion in these circles, as demonstrated by this 3000 upvote post from a few weeks ago by another creator, calling them out for abandonment, like any good friend would. 
most of the commenters agree with this sentiment and I'm not trying to call anyone out specifically, but I saw this one comment in there that I found pretty funny, which accuses Team Cherry apologists like myself for being socially inexperienced or antisocial, because expectation management is an important social skill in any relationship. And it might sound like valid criticism, until you take one step back and remember that we're talking about the small indie developer who is one, choosing to create a sequel to a game that you like, which is, by the way, something that they don't have to do if they don't want to, and two, are not engaged in a friendship, romantic, familial, or a professional relationship with you. And since we're going down this path, I also have a few, I hope, ice-cold takes on this topic. First, we don't know what is happening behind the scenes. We don't know their creative process, so we're not in a position to evaluate how easy posting updates would be. And second, the absence of the updates tells us something important. I think it's safe to assume that Team Cherry isn't just whoops, repeatedly forgetting to post a newsletter or something every day. And if you agree with this assumption, you should see that their silence is a conscious choice. For whatever reason it may be, they don't want us to know the details behind the delay, at least for now. And I'm not saying this to appear morally superior or anything, but I think that decision should be respected. There are some natural and very expected side effects to this though. The hype reaches past its terminal velocity and the game starts living its own life, brewing within the imagination of the people impatiently waiting for it. In my case, for example, I obviously don't know what the game's like outside of the trailers, but I sure as hell can imagine myself having a good time playing it, so it seems I have created at least some kind of idea of it and the kind of experience I expect it to give me. A construction extrapolated from Hollow Knight and the other information given, shaped by the culture of these communities and this infection. But I'd bet that my Silk Song is not going to match up with what will eventually be released. And the same thing goes for everyone. The more obsessed you are about it, the more elaborate, and unless you're a time wizard, the more inaccurate your construction will be, and the more potential there is for disappointment when the expectations don't match up. But I wonder, even if the game was exactly how you wanted it to be, would you be satisfied? Like, I've been hyped for many games in the past, and even in the case of the good ones, that preceding excitement years in the making always fades away after I get past the opening screen. It's like the construction, this mysterious promise of a feeling that the game should grant me is swept away in an instant when the game becomes real and I get to actually experience it. Now, I don't think that this means that there is anything wrong with the game, but rather that the idea of it is a completely different entity than the real thing. What I actually wanted from it is something that the game could never give me. I know this since every time I step past that threshold and get what I want, the goalposts move farther away, the construction shatters and something else. A new desire for another new shiny thing quickly starts growing in its place. Everyone knows this cycle, but in cases like the release of Silk Song, the repercussions of such a shattering are more devastating than usual. You see, in Hollow Knight, when the infection is finally defeated, the creatures animated by it cease to exist as we came to know them, and then Hallownest falls silent. And I think the same fate awaits the communities fueled by these constructions. And this is not a hard prediction to make. Elden Ring used to have a community a lot like this one, with a lore wiki and everything, but no one talks about that anymore. If I imagine a scenario where a culture stops existing, it feels natural for me to assume that the cause would be some kind of catastrophe or a slow decline or some other negative event, but here it's the complete opposite. The ultimate desire 
of a community like this is the very thing that will cause it to collapse when fulfilled. It was never meant to last forever, and maybe that's a part of the reason these places turn so unhinged so quickly. It's not a culture being nurtured and built slowly over time, but rather one chaotically burning to the ground and something different emerging from its ashes. I know I made Arsla Silk Song seem like hell on earth, but I still miss it when it's gone. The collective unrequited hype of all 50,000 people subscribed there, the groundwork that this weird place is built upon, will disappear in an instant. The people won't go anywhere, but there will be no reason to put on the clown costume anymore. What will the layers of irony protect you from? What is there to bait about after the game comes out? Maybe this is some kind of very convoluted, unconscious cope to make myself feel better about the game taking so long, or a side effect of spending way too much time in these spaces in the last two months. But I find this process genuinely kind of bittersweet. There's something charming about places like this, and the amount of high effort shit posts they pump out, how lively they seem, and in contrast, how fragile they actually are. If you're watching this and the game hasn't come out yet, you still have the opportunity to go look at this happen in real time and appreciate the sheer silliness of it. Now's the time, cause it'll be gone before you know it. Thanks for watching.